Hello everyone, my name is Cyril Sorongon from Manila, Philippines, and what we'll be discussing today would be the amplitude envelope that is commonly found as one of the modules in a synthesizer. Now, I'm going to be using a subtractive synth, which is called Subtractor in Propeller Head Reason. And what this particular module does is that it configures how we will hear the sound over time. In an amplitude envelope, we have four parameters that are commonly seen in the synth. We have the attack, decay, sustain, and release. So now I will work on a single sound and we will now adjust the amplitude envelope so that we can hear the changes that it does to the sound. Now let's work first on the attack. Now as I play the note, we can see here the note on which indicates that I'm pressing the key and as you can hear, it immediately sounds off to its fullest. This is because the attack is at zero. Now the attack can be thought of as how quick the sound hits its maximum level. Now in this case with attack zero at zero, we can hear the sound automatically. Now if we raise the attack, we will now hear the sound glide into the maximum. So that's how the attack works on our sound. Now decay is the time it takes once it reaches the maximum to die down. With the decay here, we can hear the sound hit its fullest and then it goes down. Now it's worth to mention that sustain is the only adjustment here that doesn't particularly work on time. As I said, attack now works on the time it takes to reach the fullest and, the de and then decay for the time it takes to die down. Sustain, however, doesn't work with time. It just adjusts now the level of the sustain. As I raise the sustain level here, you'll hear now, once the sound hits the maximum, it gently dies down and then it sustains on a particular level that we set on the sustain. So you heard that it was kept at a certain level. Release comes in once you lift your finger off of the keyboard. Also worth pointing out that release works only if there is still a sound that's playing or it can be heard. So as we as we can play just to release a bit here, as I press the key, okay, and then I lift the, my finger off. So we can hear that the release still plays. Let's have another go at it. I, I let go, and we can still hear the key. So that's how the amplitude envelope influences your design or your creation of sound. Now let's go over a few configurations that you can use for creating your own sound once you dive into synthesis. First, we work on the switch setting. We can see here in our amp envelope that the only setting that I have uh, that's different is the decay setting. Now with the attack at zero, sustain and release at zero, the sound now is more of an on-off setting that the moment I press the keyboard, it sounds and the moment I lift my finger off the keyboard, it dies. So let's just hear it. Now traditionally, this is particularly useful if you're making organ sounds. But in my case, this is how we can uh, do a nice setting for bass synths uh, for dance music. And up next, we have our percussive setting. With our percussive setting, I simply used a noise oscillator and then as you can see here, it's pretty similar to our switch setting but I have the decay quite low. So this is so that we can hear the initial snap and then the sound immediately dies. So as you hear, it's like a snare clap type of sound that immediately triggers with a transient and then dies. Now again, this is particularly useful if you're doing like percussive types of sound as I said. In this example, I used it as a snare. Next is we have our dampened percussive sound. Now, as we can see here, I gently lifted the decay setting. Now, this is particularly useful if you're trying to design piano type of sounds. So we can hear that it dies down, but it takes a while for it to die down. Just like on a typical piano, when you press on the keys, it doesn't immediately cut or die down like a percussive instrument, it takes some time for the piano strings to vibrate and gently decay. Next up, we have our sustaining configuration, wherein we can see here that our setting is quite different already from the others where we had 
the decay setting just moving around. Now in the sustaining setting, I'm trying to recreate a sound that I did here by mimicking a string type of instrument. Now this, is, this particular sustaining configuration can be useful for bowed or blown type of sounds. So let's just hear how this works. Now for my setting, I just lifted the attack a bit just so that there's a slow attack, just like a typical violin. And then we heard that it hit its maximum volume and then went down and then is kept now at bay by the sustain level that we adjusted. Lastly, we have our quirky setting, which was uh, taught to us by our instructor. The interesting bit here about the quirky setting is that there are two reactions from the synth, depending now on your playing. Now let's just hear how it sounds if I just press the keys and I keep my fingers on them. So it's pretty much similar to a percussive type of sound. However, we have the release lifted. As you can remember earlier, I mentioned that the release plays a sound as long as it has something to pick up on. Now in this case, I press the keys and I keep my fingers on the keys. Okay, and then I lift it up now and then we don't hear anything because there's nothing to pick up on. However, if I immediately lift my hands or lift my fingers from the keys, let's hear what it sounds. Now, because I had to lift my fingers quite quickly, there was still a decay and the release now had something to pick up from. Now, why is it quirky? Now, depending on your playing style, let's hear how this sounds. So there are two reactions, one with a quick percussive sound and then depending on your playing style, once I lift my finger quickly, the release now comes in. So those are the different configurations that you can use for designing your sound by using the amplitude envelope. Now I hope you learned a thing or two. Thank you very much and have a good day.